are printed up and loaned out. But at the same time, $50,000 worth of warehouse receipts have been issued to the original depositors. Those are the legitimate warehouse receipts. Okay? So the bank now has in circulation $130,000 worth of warehouse receipts. Okay? $50,000 that have been initially issued to the original owners, $80,000 that have been printed up okay, in an illegitimate fashion and loaned out at interest. So now we have fractional reserve banking. Assuming they keep the full amount of, of gold coin that was initially deposited, you now have a much less than 100% banking, even less than 50%. Okay. The key point, however, is that every single one of these $130,000 worth of warehouse receipts looks like every other one. You can't tell the counterfeit ones from the real ones or the pseudo ones from the legitimate ones. So everyone who has those receipts has a claim on that $50,000 worth of gold coin. So the initial depositors have been defrauded in that sense. Okay. Um, if everyone tried to turn those receipts in at the same time, of course, um, the bank would go bankrupt. And many of the original depositors, if they didn't get there first, would never get their, their property back. Okay. Now, something else to um, we can say about fractional reserve banking. There is a tendency, an inherent tendency to deflation in the sense that when those $80,000 in loans are paid back, notice what happens. The, the cash suddenly disappears, okay? The, um, the, the deposits suddenly disappear that were on, on or, or the, the bank notes are turned in, okay, as they pay back those notes, um, as they pay back their loans, and the money supply is deflated, okay? So um, the money supply then drops by $80,000. Before that, it had increased by $80,000. So one of the general um, um, characteristics of fractional reserve banking is that whenever there is a loan, whenever a fractional reserve bank makes a loan, it increases the money supply. Whenever it cancels a loan, it decreases the money supply. Now, let me just mention uh, very quickly something else here. Um, there are two basic form of forms of warehouse receipts okay, that had been issued. One was the bank note, which was the, the, the physical warehouse receipt. But another was an open book account. Some of the larger depositors preferred not to carry the, the paper notes around, but to have an account in which balances were kept at the bank. Okay? And they could write checks on these open book accounts. So they were basically checking accounts. And then transfer the balances, which stayed at the bank, okay, but was, were transferred to uh, a, a second party okay, that had, had uh, sold something to the, to the business. Um, as fractional reserve banking developed, there's really a mixing between uh, deposit banking, okay, and today we have this, and loan banking. Okay? Uh, today we have something called commercial banks, and they're basically um, hybrid banks, banks in which deposit um, banking is mixed together with loan banking. So a bank um, is operating as a loan bank if it issues a certificate of deposit. If you buy a, a six-month certificate of deposit for $10,000, that is not inflationary in the sense that it does not increase the money supply. Okay? The $10,000 is transferred through the bank from you to a borrower. And then in six months, it's repaid and you, and you get your, your principal plus the interest back. However, if you, if you put your money in, in a checking account, um, in the U.S. today, 90% of that um, can be loaned out, approximately 90%. Okay? And that then increases the money supply. And I will show you how that, that actually occurs here. All right, so uh, right, right before I show you how it actually occurs, let me just say, um, sum up uh, fractional reserve banking. Okay, first of all, it's inflationary. Okay, it's inherently inflationary because it, um, whenever it makes any loans, it increases the money supply, as, it, as in this case. It increases the money supply by $80,000, and that increases prices eventually. Okay? Um, to the extent that, that the, 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 number, the amount of warehouse receipts exceeds the, the, the deposited gold, that amount of warehouse receipts operate as inflation or operate in an inflationary manner. 
Secondly, the fractional reserve banks can create money out of thin air. Okay, when they print up these receipts over and above the, the amount of gold that has been initially deposited, there is an increase in the money supply. Okay? And it's done you know, ex nihilo, that is, from nothing. Okay? You suddenly have, have um, money in the economy. Uh, they're also inherently bankrupt because the time structure of their assets do not match the time structure of their liabilities, meaning the following. If you look on the right side, you'll see that um, total notes and deposits, okay, that's the total liabilities, the total amount they owe um, instantaneously or on demand, comes to one point um, eight million dollars, okay? But on the left side, the only cash they have on hand to meet that 1.8 million dollars, okay, which is an instantaneous liability, is the three hundred thousand dollars they keep in cash reserves, okay? The rest is loaned out at different maturities, okay, for greater or, or shorter periods of time. So, all of its liabilities are instantaneous, but only a very small part of its, um, Assets are instantaneously available. Okay. So what that, that, that implies is that uh, the, the um, maturity structure or the term structure of the assets far exceeds that of the liabilities, okay, in, in temporally speaking. Okay. Also, whether or not fractional reserve banking is based on gold, as it was under a gold standard in, in the 19th century, for example, in the US, uh, and in Great Britain, or, if it's, or whether it's based on fiat money, as it is today, okay, it's, it still operates in the same way. Okay? It's still inherently inflationary. It still creates money out of, of thin air. It still has, uh, results in a mismatch between the time structure of assets and liabilities. Now, there, there are two difficulties that limit fractional reserve banking before you get a central bank, okay, in the absence of a central bank. And one is, uh, the more that a particular bank inflates the money supply, the higher the prices are in its area of operation, right? And with higher prices, what happens is that people in that area begin to take these bank notes and buy things in other areas where prices have not gone up yet. And when those notes are returned to other banks, okay, the, the first bank's notes, those other banks then demand their gold. So if one bank inflates more than surrounding banks, it's going to lose gold reserves to those other banks because it's going to drive prices up in its area and discourage exports from that area and encourage people to, to purchase imports from, a, from abroad. So there's going to be um, a, a, a disequilibrium between the notes it gets from the other banks and the notes that other banks get from it. Okay? So it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, the other banks will have, um, accumulate more of, it, of, of its notes. And the only way you can pay for that difference, okay, if, if the notes were equal, they would just exchange notes. But if, if, if the other bank holds more of your notes and you do of its notes, you have to pay that difference in gold. So the bank begins to lose reserves, people begin to lose confidence, and they risk a bank run. If everyone comes into the bank at the same time, obviously this bank would immediately collapse or collapse after a very short time. Okay? And secondly, in order for the warehouse receipts to function as substitutes for gold or for the government notes, which, whichever is the, the, the base money, uh, the bank must build up a reputation for honesty and safety. Okay? Uh, and, and, and make people believe that it's able to instantly redeem its deposits. So the bank has to be conservative in some sense. Okay? If it starts to make um, bad loans and people see that, that uh, borrowers are defaulting on the loans, they're going to begin to come to the bank and demand their gold. Okay. All right, now let's look uh, at how fractional reserve banking increases the money supply. Okay, beyond just one bank, how, how the system as a whole will operate to increase the money supply. Let me see if I... Okay, let me just... Okay, zoom in a little bit. Let's take the first national bank on the left side, okay? Um, looking at this T account here, okay, notice that um, the liabilities, the demand deposits or check accounts, we'll talk in terms of checking accounts now, uh, are $10,000, okay? Initially it has reserves of $10,000.